This episode of Steve's Outdoor Adventures is sponsored by the Far Wide app, outdoor intelligence in the palm of your hand. The grizzly bear is one of the most iconic animals to inhabit the vast landscape of the Alaskan wilderness. Each year, thousands of people travel to Alaska in hopes of seeing one of North America's most feared predators. From photo safaris at the infamous Brooks Falls to hunting the big bears on salmon streams, mountainsides, and berry patches, Alaska is the number one destination in North America with an estimated population of over 30,000 animals. The Boone and Crockett Club recognizes two subspecies of grizzly bear. The coastal grizzly, better known as a brown bear, inhabits all of Southeast Alaska, up the coastline, the Kodiak Archipelago, and the Alaskan Peninsula, including Unimac Island, and throughout all of Southwest Alaska, with an invisible line dividing the Boone and Crockett subspecies designation between the larger brown bear and their smaller cousins, the interior grizzly bear, which is located throughout the interior of the rest of the state. Hunters in pursuit of the Super Slam of North America must take all 29 species of North American big game as recognized by the Super Slam Club, a list which includes both the brown bear and the grizzly bear subspecies. And with British Columbia, Alberta, and the Northwest Territories closed to grizzly bear hunting for political reasons, and only a handful of permits for Arctic grizzly and Nunavut each year, this leaves Alaska as North America's only reliable grizzly hunting destination. Which brings us to this week's show. Join us as John Sullivan returns to Alaska during the early spring season in April to hunt for a grizzly as he emerges from his winter's den. But this spring is like no prior spring we have ever experienced as winter refuses to release its hold on Alaska, dumping records amounts of snow on the area where John will be hunting. In the mountains just north of the invisible line designating brown bear or grizzly, this is the same territory that we have hunted for years, filming our adventures that we have shared with you for the last decade. And now it's John's turn to make his mark and hunt for his first grizzly. John's adventure started with flying into Anchorage and spending the night at the Lakefront Hotel. And the next morning, checking in at Lake and Pen Air for his flight out to Port Allsworth, a small community located on Lake Clark. Port Allsworth is a special place where every visitor has their own connection to the borough and a plan to return at some point to a place that is clearly blessed by God. And Lake and Pen Air, founded by Dave and Jackie Wilder, has been flying into Port Allsworth for 30 years. Dave and his son Lyle have been flying Steve's Outdoor Adventures clients into remote places in Alaska for over two decades. And we always tell everyone that your adventure starts at Merrill Field, the headquarters for Lake and Pen Air, when you go wheels up and lift off over Anchorage. Because within minutes, you are over the Cook Inlet and on your way. As the plane neared Mount Readout, he could see the epic snows that still covered the Alaskan landscape. This flight is worth the price of admission, and the scenic view from the plane as it travels through Lake Clark Pass is breathtaking. And all too soon, the plane was out of the pass and over the recently thawed out Lake Clark. And within minutes, the Cessna caravan was on final approach and touching down in Port Allsworth. This is where things really start moving. In Alaska, when the weather is good, you fly because it can change in a minute and ground you for days. John's plane was met, the bags were collected and loaded in the truck and driven to the Super Cub where Jeremy put the gear in the plane and fueled up. And within an hour of touching down at Port Allsworth, John was wheels up yet again. This time for a much more personal and scenic ride in a much smaller airplane and a close up view of the Alaskan wilderness. The snow covered landscape is breathtaking. Mid April is when spring is coming on, but winter is trying to hold on. And this year, winter is winning. Flying low across the Alaskan wilderness, time passes too quickly. And 40 minutes later, John is landing at South Fork. 
a handful of structures along a slough in the river bottom that serves as base camp for operations in the backcountry. 62 degrees, it says. Yeah, it feels warm. Ridiculous. It's about as warm as I've ever seen it go. Yeah. A little bit of can of gas. Yeah. And with the new lodge being finished this summer, we look forward to expanding the opportunities offered to our clients. But for now, we are focused on the task at hand. It's spring bear season, and John's quest for his first grizzly bear is about to begin. This segment of Steve's Outdoor Adventures has been sponsored by Pendleton Ammunition. Loading bullets, one round at a time. This segment of Steve's Outdoor Adventures has been sponsored by Bergara Rifles. A passion for precision. Every barrel, every rifle. At country base of operations, known as South Fork, there were now things to be done. The weather was ideal for flying to locate bears popping out of their dens. So Jeremy dedicated the rest of the day to flying a massive area, hoping to find a target bear for the next day. While John checked the zero on his rifle and prepared for his hunt. On this hunt, John is shooting his trusted Bergara Premier Series Highlander, chambered in 300 Winchester Magnum, and shooting hand-loaded Bear Hammer Pendleton ammunition. The rifle is topped with the Burris Eliminator 3 laser scope, which has been sighted in and calibrated to the exact ballistics of his custom ammunition. For Mountain Grizzlies, the 300 Winchester Magnum, loaded with the proper ammunition, is plenty of gun to get the job done, and most importantly, John is well practiced with this rifle. He has used it on several hunts and spends a lot of time at the range. On a grizzly hunt, using a rifle that you're familiar with is critical. And this is something that John is about to learn in the days ahead. This week's Checking Zero is sponsored by the Adventure Armory. Rifle, scope, and ammo packages made for hunters. John doesn't ride snowmobiles often, and this spring's hunt was gonna require extensive time on the sleds. So with Jeremy still out flying, John and one of the guides hopped on the skidoos and headed out to get a little riding in. Stay active, do some glassing, and enjoy the rest of his first day in Alaska. Going to bed that night with the hopes of Jeremy spotting a bear sitting outside of his den sometime soon. The next morning, it was evident that spring was finally here. Temperatures were rising, and the river and slough were quickly thawing out as the snow on the cabin started to melt. The transition of the seasons had finally started at South Fork, and on a day like this, Jeremy warmed up the cub and took off, lifting up out of the long river bottom and headed up to the mountains where the bears would surely be popping out of their dens today. If you're sitting around stationary, your mind starts to wander, start wondering about things, so we figure we may as well get to work help out here around camp, split some wood, and uh, make sure we're provisioned when the guys get back. Our motto on these spring grizzly hunts is hurry up and wait. So John passed the time playing checkers. You king me. You're the king. And splitting even more wood while waiting for Jeremy to return. Late that afternoon, Jeremy flew by high overhead and then gave the guys his signature low fly by the cabins. Surely a good sign that he had spotted a bear. Something 
the back. We got a plan? Yep. From a distance, we flew in like this, and I was like, I think he's under that tree. And I look over there, and I could see his nose in the sun, like, from a mile away. Really? Oh, yeah, he was peeking out from under that tree. I said, I think I just saw his nose. So I swung around this way, and sure enough, he was just sitting there, and they're just watching us fly around. And he's a nice, big, dark horse. So. Okay. The only problem is he's in a spot that it's just going to be, can't, we can't just, we can't drive in there. Yeah, we got sure. We're going to have to, no, we'll drive over with snow mills, but we're going to have to get on snowshoes and snowshoe into where he okay. is. Okay. In the spirit of fair chase, Alaska state law prohibits Jeremy from flying and hunting on the same day. But with a plan to leave early the next morning and a target bear on what looks to be a moose kill, things look promising for the next day. This segment of Steve's Outdoor Adventures has been sponsored by Burris Optics. Find what matters. That night, the skies cleared, and overnight the temperatures dropped well below freezing. Awake well before dawn, John laced up and prepared for the long day ahead. Got a nice early start, so we have plenty of time to get over there, get in position. You know, it's funny the amount of variables that have to come into play during all this, whether it's traveling, which sleds do better, and hard snow versus soft snow. Um, and you just gotta play all these different variables to your advantage. So even if we get over there quickly, we're gonna have to wait a little while because we're gonna snowshoe up to the bear. And if it snows real hard, um, he may hear us coming. So um, long ways to go today, but you know, we got a target bear and got an early start and we're on our way so um, you know best guides in the world we'll see if we can get it done the now frozen snow was perfect and made for a faster than planned ride out to the valley adjacent to the bear Well ahead of schedule and with plenty of time to spare, they glassed the hillsides for bear tracks, which could indicate that the bear had walked out of the area overnight. And with no visible tracks, Jeremy rode to the top of the ridge to get his bearings and verify the predominant wind direction. He's coming back this way. We'll see, hold on. Exactly what I said I thought was gonna about to happen. Yeah. Now this is where the hunt becomes an adventure. The plan was to make the long hike to the top of the ridge and then drop down the other side and first find a vantage point to glass from and locate either bear tracks in the snow or the bear. Patiently, they glassed for an hour before moving down into the valley, moving slowly and quietly while approaching the spot where Jeremy thought that the bear was laying on a moose kill. Yeah. 
stopping often to glass under every tree for a bear that could appear at any moment. Every step on the frozen snow, frightfully loud. Once in the timber, it could happen any second. John's rifle is out and at the ready. The valley bottom snow is getting soft and the going is painfully slow. The alders, a loud and tangled obstacle. Jeremy knows they are close, his pistol now in his hand. Should they stumble upon the bear on his moose kill, things could happen quickly. And a few seconds later, there he was. I'm on him with a wide lens. This segment of Steve's Outdoor Adventures is sponsored by the Far Wide app. Outdoor intelligence in the palm of your hand. This segment is sponsored by Adventure Armory. Rifle, scope, and ammunition packages shipped, ready to shoot. If you'd like to book this week's adventure for yourself, give our office a call. We will gladly take your calls, answer your questions, and help you book the hunting or fishing adventure of a lifetime. After a long climb, and now a slow stalk through the spruce trees and alders. John and Jeremy step around a tree and spot the big Bruin. He's on his moose kill, facing them, about to charge. It all happened fast. I'm on him with a wide lens. Nice, he hit him, hit him again, he's going to the right. Waiting on him. Nice. Oh my gosh. And on replay, you can see the bear when the camera goes to the right of the tree, and after the last shot, you can actually see the grizzly going down. There are no words to adequately describe what it's like to kill a grizzly bear, especially one up close and personal. But to say it's an experience one will never forget is an understatement. And walking up to and finally laying your hands on your first grizzly bear is an awesome life-changing event and I'm sure that this will not be John's last grizzly hunt. All right, so still coming down off the adrenaline rush. We left the lodge at what, 6.30 this morning? Yep. Rode for four hours, hiked up to the top of a mountain, snowshoed down a ridge, you know, down a spine to where we thought, you know, maybe 500 yards short of where we thought he'd be because playing the wind. Right. Yeah. Hiked up, post the holing. Just yeah. kept switching all the wind way down. Wind was swirling, yeah. Dude. Hiked up, you know, thought he's probably going to hear us. He's probably going to wind us. We knew he had been staying here. Jeremy called it. He thought he was on a moose kill. This bear, we've seen his behavior in the past. Moose kill right there. Dead bear right there. Just an unbelievable hunt. You know, we're over and over throughout that hunt as I'm up to my crotch in a post hole, I'm asking myself, how bad do you want a grizzly bear? Yeah. Like, sorry, he's just no. he's a little heavy. We should have had a snowshoe a little bit bigger hey. for you because he's bigger. We wanted it bad enough. Moves. We wanted it bad enough to get him. Oh, man. Now we got him. That's so awesome. Thanks, Jeremy. Came right to it. Yeah. <laughs> Good job, man. It's the best so, bear guy in so the world right there. Fun. That was awesome, John. Good job. Ready? Thank you. I want to do it still? Yep. Oh, yeah. Just like it is. Yeah. Amazing animal. Well, I sure would like to have seen, uh, seen him kill him that moose. I know. Wouldn't that would be amazing footage? <laughs> that would be <laughs> so yeah, cool. Let's just jump on him and the moose can't go anywhere. With little time to spare, Jeremy's experienced hand skin the trophy, and after a long climb back up to the sleds, they start the long four-hour ride back to South Fork, arriving well after dark. And a few days later, John flew back to Port Allsworth and started his long journey home. Check out the new Steve's Outdoor Adventures podcast. 
We feature incredible guests talking about some of our favorite hunting areas. We offer hunting tips, advice on applying into draw areas, and we share some of the most unbelievable stories from behind the scenes in the filming of the Steve's Outdoor Adventures and Adventure Series television programs. You can download the podcast on the Apple and Spotify platforms or stream the video version filmed in the Steve's Outdoor Adventure studio on both YouTube and far wide. This podcast is a whole new version of Steve's Outdoor Adventures, only it's unscripted and unedited. Download or stream it today. Hunting Alaska and its big bears is something that we're extremely proud of. And if you'd like to book this adventure for yourself or any other big game hunting or fishing trip, give our office a call. We're always available to take your calls, answer your questions, and help you book the hunting or fishing adventure of a lifetime. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for this week's show. But please remember to join us again next week when we bring you another exciting episode of Steve's Outdoor Adventures. If you enjoyed this episode, please click like and subscribe to see more of Steve's Outdoor Adventures right here on YouTube.